Okay, this is a dubbing tutorial with natural hairs and furs. Uh, I've chosen one fur here to give you a good idea of what it consists of. I'll just tack that in. Like so. So this is muskrat. So what we have is we have the dense under fur or down which it's also called. We have the longer guard hairs which are these long finely tapered uh, thicker hairs. Now the guard hairs are the oiliest ones. These protect uh, the, the fur from water. So the under fur is the dense one, this is the insulating fur which also traps air which helps also against water. Now depending on, there are no two furs that are the same, even from the same species of animal. Like all natural materials the type of fur or the quality of it depends on the animal's age, geography, uh, climate, uh, its style of living, whether it's living in a dry climate or a wet climate or water or desert, uh, if it's living in high mountain or down by the sea. So it, it's this is very, very uh, different types of fur for different types of lifestyle. So we'll go into uh, five or six techniques of using all the different types of hair on the muskrat for different styles of dubbing. So if you want a traditional dry fly dubbing we want to remove these guard hairs. So you can do this manually by just pulling them out. You won't get rid of them all. I mean that's uh, you have to be very pedantic to do that but you can get rid of most of them. Uh, and they're rather easier to pull out than the under fur because they're thicker so once you get hold of them they will come out and the, the under fur will remain. So there we have a nice uh, cut section you can see with the guard hairs without the guard hairs. Now you can see also that the end of the under fur, and this is on most mammals, will become crinkly at the ends. This is to trap air. So it adds again as a, a good insulator for both heat and cold and as a water repellent when the air is trapped there. So what we can do now is you have several different options. You can cut long hair like that. So you have the crinkle tips and the under fur. Now what we do with that is this has to be mixed in your hand if you want the long fur like this. You can also mix it in a jar with water. So what you want is a, a glass jar with a tight lid. You fill it with water, you put your or you half fill it with water, you put your fur in and you give it a good shake. Once you've shaken that up, the fur will mix beautifully. And then you can take it out, put it between some kitchen paper to press out most of the moisture, and then put it on some newspaper to dry. Now you can do that with the long hair. Now I prefer the long hair for a traditional dry fly dubbing like for an Adams. This works much better with, with a longer fibred under fur. So you can also do it with a mixture of the guard hairs and the longer fur to give a spikier dubbing. Now if you want a little coarser rougher dubbing what you can do is you can cut this in shorter hairs like so. And we, blend, we mix this by pulling it from each other and putting it on top like that. And this will give you a, a little bit more buggy effect on your bodies. 
nice for nymphs. So you pull it out like that and you get that nice different buggy effect rather than a smooth body. And of course you can take the tips, the points and cut it even shorter to make a very spiky buggy dubbing. Let's have a look at the dubbings. Okay, the first dubbing is your long fibred under fur. Now don't take too much of this, we only need a little at a time. This is your classic dry fly dubbing. Uh, so we just attach that quite tightly then we can slide it up, catch it in with a couple of turns and then we can twist on what we require further. So this will give you a, a tight body. Just take your time with it. There we go. So that's your classic type of dry fly dubbing. So if you want that even tighter, take a lighter and we can just burn off the fuzzy and you get a super fine dry fly body. So the next one is the shorter under fur. Now to mix this what you do unlike mixing it in the palm of your hand you put it on top of each other and you pull it from each other like that so it's all going the same way. This is I find this is the best way to use it. So you can take a little bit like this and just take a piece at a time this will give you a little bit more scruffy body. We don't want to wrap this too tight. So again, we'll just slide that up and catch it in. And then we can just wrap it on again. And this will give you a, a shorter fuzzy body. further then we use a touch dubbing so we take a, a, a tacky wax and all we want to do is just put a little bit of that on the tying thread and then the dubbing I'm using now is the mixture of under fur and the guard hairs so we just put a little bit of that on there like that will stay in position because it's waxy, sticky, tacky. And then what we do is just a little turn, squeeze a little as you do it. And this will give you a spiky buggy dubbing as you can see there we we'll just go a little bit further and again this can be used uh, mostly for nymphs but on dry flies as well um, now I want to split my tying thread so I'll spin it anti-clockwise to flatten it out and we'll split that right up to the hook shank. Now what I've done is I've taken a little piece of under fur with a few guard hairs in here in a Petit Jean clip. Now there are lots of clips about, you can even use a bulldog clip. I used it for many many years a bulldog clip. Uh, but the, what I like about the Petit Jean clip is you can see what's going on through the transparent plastic. So we just put that in like that, spin our tying thread now clockwise 
and we just spin that up and this will give you a, a very nice even dubbing brush so we'll just give that want to really fold all that back with each turn so that's an even buggier scruffier look so then we'll go forward and I'll show you a fur hackle. So we want to split our tying thread again. There we are. I'll split that again. And if you're using heavier materials, what you want to do is make a dubbing loop by doubling your thread. Uh, but with light materials, it's okay to split it. So I now have a full clip with guard hairs and under fur. This is your fur hackle. So we place that in. Put that in there. And then we'll just spin that up again clockwise. And this will give you a nice even fur hackle. This is good for uh, thoraxes on nymphs if you adjust the the length of the the hackle I've got a little bit caught in there we'll just pull that out and of course as a collar hackle for larger predator and salt water patterns so we fold that back again each turn just to get the hackle in place as you would a, a wet fly hackle and you wind on the fur hackle Toothbrush or a dubbing brush and just brush that out. So there's your fur hackle. So there you have it, you have one, two, three, four, five different techniques, dubbing techniques using the same uh, fur. Uh, they can all be applied to different patterns and different techniques. Um, give them a go. If you enjoy the videos, please like, share, subscribe and thanks for watching.